to replace him because there are certain things Jobs will never do that could be very good for Apple and the consumer. You know what, I, 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 I think I said in a previous episode when it was still alive or maybe two shows ago, uh, you know the new CEO, Cook, uh, if you look back at 2007, uh, 2009, uh, and I wrote about it, it's very, I, I was very much watching the patent situations all the time. Uh, the threats that came from Apple towards Palm, they might sue Palm because they had the, uh, you know, all those gestures, and, you know, multi-touch, whatever. The one who was mentioning the possibility of a lawsuit was in fact Cook when he was the CFO or COO or the uh, CFO at the time. Or... And, I, and honestly, Cook reminds me a little bit of Scully. If you want to go back in that stuff, and that he, he he's gonna he he just he's not gonna innovate. He's gonna go for Sue. Um, and that, that's what's his what's I, his background professionally? You know, I think in other words, if he's a lawyer or a technologist or. Um, I'm trying to remember. I, used, I, I it's you, you're catching that song. I want to say he was in. God, what the hell was he doing? I can't remember now. <laughs> like, I mean, I think he was CFO before, so it means financial things. So he yeah. He was mostly his his objective was to try and impress the investors. We make more money. We make more money. We make more money. And he would just words like intellectual property. I think. Uh, what I liked about Jobs, he would say even things like magic, which I found kind of harmless in a sense, even though you cannot see magic in great specifications. Uh, I, I'm just slightly worried. He reminds me of Balmer. Hoof reminds me in some ways of Balmer, because Balmer is kind of a business background. And Balmer, he understands technology because some people speak to him about it, but he never wrote like a program or anything like that. So he, uh, he just thinks about money. You know, how do I make money? How do I destroy the competition? And he doesn't think of the values of, like, let's do something really innovative. Let's do something that's really, really good. Well, now, I, I, honestly, this has nothing whatsoever to do with Steve Jobs one way or the other. But my personal state, uh, opinion of Apple, especially after seeing the press thing Cook gave, uh, was it last week or the week before, you know, if they were blogging and so on, it's, um, I don't think any of the... I think they're hearing the end of the blueprint they currently have, and I don't think they have anybody to pick up, you know, the blueprint they had. So I think between now and 2020 or 2025, they're going to bleed themselves unless they get someone in there that will innovate. It'll happen slowly. It's not going to happen overnight. But they innovate before. If you go back to the 80s and 90s and stuff, did they? I mean, I'm asking that not because I don't necessarily know, but I, I think you know better because you're slightly older than myself, and I think you've watched it longer than I have. But, I, I mean, the stereotype says that they were copying originally, well, mostly copying zero. So, of course, loads of people will just forget that. Uh, and then Apple kind of became very weak and didn't do much before Jobs came back. That's the thing. That well, uh, the, the, the fine details of what happened there was... Um, Bill Gates wanted Scully to license OS X so Microsoft could sell their office suite to all the personal computers out there. Um, and Scully didn't want to do that. He wanted every personal computer to be a computer that Apple made, not Apple's platform. So Microsoft went with Plan B. They got in a hissy fit. Basically, Microsoft was focused on software, Apple was focused on hardware, and that's been the rub between the companies ever since. So that that's the particulars there. If we Scully had listened, yeah, if Scully had listened to Gates, we would all be running Apple OS. Okay. Uh, did they actually make hardware? Did they actually make Apple hardware, or did they do the casing and some of the uh, order, you know, actual maybe designs for factories to make? To what to what extent was actually a hardware company? Uh, well, basically, they wanted to... Uh, OEM type. Yeah. OEM type, yeah, okay. Yeah, you're right, because they are reselling other people's parts, but they, they wanted to protect that brand. They didn't see any value in licensing. At least Scully didn't. I think now with graphical user interface, as, uh, some of them are being aided by hardware in some, some capacity, and I think Apple's got some patents on how to smooth the fonts, uh, maybe using a GPU or using some hardware acceleration thing. And well, and, and th th that whole thing is is a tiny thing. I mean, Xerox tried to sell the Alto years before the Macintosh, 
uh, and other other people tried to sell GUI systems. I mean, look at how much those systems cost, and that's in 1970s, 1980s dollars. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah, the reality was Apple just happened to come along at just the right time, and so did that little boom that happened. In the, that basically, the technology to do it finally got affordable. It wasn't cheap, but it was affordable. I think in closing that the, the whole set of story in the, the tragic news that Mr. Jobs has passed away, which I'm sure we all agree uh, that is a, a very sad thing. Uh, it gets blown out of proportion. It's one of these arguments that you, you can never win because it seems to me that there's many people in the race that uh, hold this event high regard and whatever you say against Mr. Mr. Jobs will be uh, held against you. And then there's other people who like to stir the pot a little bit and uh, imply that Richard Stallman's saying this and saying that. And I, I think a bit of perspective's uh, been made. I think Mr. Stallman said what he said, and I don't think he meant any malice or ill will against it. So he's got his opinion, and I'm sure everybody speaks the right to, uh, to speak that. What I would say, though, is something quite interesting that I've observed with uh, Steve Jobs and his position. When you look at Apple, and you had a mental image of Apple, you always pictured Steve Jobs in your mind. And I think that was quite intentional and quite pivotal in the success of Apple. We see it today in politics very much, where you have a uh, political party who have, have the figurehead, who is a celebrity, who gets amongst the crowd, who sells the product or the, the politics to the uh, to the masses. And I think that's really one of the key ingredients that Mr. Jobs managed to tap into. He became a personality, he became a celebrity, um, an entity in his own right, a product in his own right. And that's what helped push the Apple products uh, to the masses. It was a reason why people wanted the Apple logo sticking out of their back pockets. Um, then you look at Microsoft, and their figurehead is Steve Ballmer, and maybe no, 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 it's, it's actually yeah. They try to make it uh, Bill Gates increasingly to try. Well, and yeah, have... previously, I mean, previously yeah. Bill Gates was always seen, but as now, it's it's Steve uh, Steve Ballmer with everybody that uh, talks about it more generally. Yes, because Ballmer. Bill Gates is off to yeah. say give away sixty billion dollars before he dies. <laughs> yeah. uh, Steve Ballmer doesn't endear himself to the public. <laughs> As much as uh, Mr. Jobs did, um, I, I think it's, I think everybody could agree that Mr. Jobs was far, far more charismatic and appealing to the masses than uh, Steve Ballmer. Is. I don't think it's unfair to say that. And I think maybe this is part of the key to the success of the Apple product. Um, that and he managed to bridge that gap between uh, geeky and fashionable, and managed to sell the product on the basis that it was trendy to have a piece of computing equipment in your back pocket. Um, just going back very quickly, briefly to what I said at the beginning, and that was um, about Apple raising the bar and uh, in improving competition and whilst there's going to be, always be debates over who made what first, I think Apple did tap into a lot of markets where they managed to simplify products to the extent where it was uh, very intuitive for the, for the end user, especially the mainstream masses and I think raising the bar to that level improves the quality of the competing products. I, 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 I'm, I'm going to piss a lot of people off by saying this but my personal opinion on that because Apple, and this is actually words right out of Steve Jobs' mouth, was um, you know product and end result user experience over technology, and that is that is a, an aspect of the Apple brand, and that's that's fine if you want that. My my problem is because Apple Apple managed to make a brand, and as a result, they could charge a really high premium for lower tech specs, and that, that that's how Apple made all their money. Um, what I had a problem, what I have a problem with, is the result in the industry of there's other people trying to copy that model, but at a lower price, and that's kind of, in my personal opinion, having a detrimental effect on the overall qualities of systems as a whole. So it's, I, I'm, it's the boomerang of what you're talking about. I, I don't like the boomerang effect. <laughs> I mean, it's, you only, we're going to be talking about it too later on, but I mean, how many times have you seen uh, the accusations being thrown at uh, Ubuntu or Canonical that, oh, this is emulating the Mac and uh, how, how this, I mean, there's desktop themes that emulate the Mac. Well, uh, Apple's Mac desktop, the... um, which, which is that imitation is the best compliment you can receive, um, is what I was always told. And regardless of whether we agree with the way that uh, Apple conducted its affairs and whether we agree that other products were indeed in intuitive or not. Um, there are people that want to copy them and there are certainly people that want to buy them. So it's pretty it's pretty academic yeah, as to the actual products themselves. I mean my wife very much likes uh, the Apple products, however, she does like uh, Ubuntu as well. So it's 
it's also, I mean, we're talking about subjects which maybe the mainstream masses won't even consider, and they look at things in the immediate. What can this give me now? Will it look fancy? Will I be able to have it in the back pocket and increase my reputation with my friends and my peers? And these are all the things that Apple managed to corner the market because let's 